Hey guys, in this video we're talking about my interior detailing business structure and how you guys can model it and copy it exactly. And we're talking about how to instantaneously raise your prices overnight without necessarily your customer even knowing that that is what you did. Now, just to get into this context a little bit, this particular customer was somebody who I've never detailed before. This was a new customer and this was part of the kind of what I call, I get around 10 to 20 new calls a day so I only have to take one or two in order to take the of the crop and really work with the people I want to work with. So just so you guys understand the background of this customer, this detail, this particular customer was more than happy to pay the prices that I explained that I needed to uh, make in order to accomplish what he was wanting me to accomplish. And secondly, uh, this customer really valued the value of a detail. I could tell from talking to him over the phone, it became more and more obvious the longer we spoke. And so it ended up being a really great win-win. And once again, when you're able to flood your business full of more than enough customers, then you're able to take only those that you want to work with. Now, I want to start off the conversation of this video with a concept that I think is very simple that's going to serve as a really good foundation for the rest of the conversation. And that is very simply, starting off simple in the auto detailing business is going to serve you best. Now, once again, I know that seems really simple, and I think it's just important to acknowledge that sometimes even the most simplistic sort of thoughts or statements are actually things that we're not implementing, and we know them maybe cerebrally to be true, but we don't actually implement them in our lives, and so we fail to see the power of them, right? So that this is not a self-help thing at all, okay? I'm not, a, I'm not into that, but what, I'm, what I mean is, one of the things that is going to deeply hold people back and what we have to talk about before we actually get into the conversation of raising your prices is people will tend to, in this business, get overwhelmed with the thought of the complexity of what might go into all of this and it'll actually keep them from starting at all. One of the best ways, and why this video is titled the way it is, one of the best ways to keep this from happening, and by the way, no one is really like above this, and so that's why I like to put in like practical action steps that you can implement that are going to actively fight against this temptation in your life, because this is something we all experience. Complexity tends to frustrate people and then shut their brain down instead of uh, push them to action. It actually hinders the entire thing. So this is what we're trying to avoid here, and because there's a lot of complex steps when it comes to detailing, we want to try to avoid this as much as we can. That being said, one of the best ways to begin in this business is to offer interior detailing only. Now, let me put some parameters about what I mean here. This does not mean you have to deny everybody who wants an exterior detail. It doesn't mean you literally only have to ever do interior details in the beginning. It's not some black and white rigid rule that people will probably be tempted to hear. It's not black and white. It doesn't mean you can't break it. It doesn't mean you can't do exterior details. What I mean is when you're able to focus in on one particular area of detailing, you simplify your detailing business in the beginning stages way more than you realize. It's the same concept of things that don't, things don't generally grow linearly, they grow exponentially, compounded over time. And this is like a phenomenon that no matter kind of what you're talking about, this is just, we all experience this for better or for worse. It can work for you or work against you. But what I mean very simply is, while you're simplifying your business and that might that might actually make you feel like in some in some ways you will make less money or you will uh you know the temptation is like well because I'm simplifying it I'm not going to grow as much or make as much money actually the opposite becomes true when you zero in on on something very specific you end up growing in that thing exponentially and you're able to more or less master this thing. And what ends up happening in a lot of different avenues and, and through a lot of different variables is you actually make more money. It's kind of where this concept of like the riches are in the niches sort of thing comes from. When you zero in on one thing, it's kind of like you have to, uh, you have to, you have to break into one particular area before you can break into everything. Whereas most people flip that and they think, okay, I want to break into everything. I want to build a business that reaches everyone instead of uh, b building a business in the beginning that reaches somebody and then grows from there. They This concept gets flipped. And so you can actually flip this around for your gain and in the detailing world, focus on these customers who want interior details. 
Now, what ended up happening with this detail is it was designed to only be an interior detail, but when they saw what had happened after I was finished, they wanted me to go ahead and do the exterior. And this is my not-so-subtle segue into talking about my major point here. And that is kind of what goes with this idea of my interior detailing business strategy and how you can copy it. One of the things that you want to focus on doing, and this probably extends to a lot of different service-based businesses, but we'll just keep it contextualized for detailing right now. One of the things that you want to do that a lot of people do not focus on is you want to minimize the barrier to your customer as many times in the beginning and for as long as you can in the beginning. In other words, I need to create the most Uh, appealing win-win and the most convenient win-win for my customer and myself as is possible even if what I'm offering them in that moment is not necessarily what I want to continue offering all my customers over the long term. Let me say this one more time. I need to break in to the market that I'm targeting locally And in order to do that, I have to lower the barrier to my customer as much as possible through creating an appealing win-win and convenience for them, even if creating convenience for them at some level creates a little bit of an inconvenience for me. And if I do those two things really well over uh, a a certain period of time, it doesn't have to be long-term, but over a certain period of time, I will then be able to break into the customer base that I really want, offer what I really want to do long term, but In a sense, I might have to do this short term and offer things short term I don't necessarily plan to do long term. The mistake is to let that get in the way of you making anything or taking any action whatsoever. The mistake is thinking, because this is not what I want to do long term, this is not what I'm going to do at all. A lot of times people are like, they're thinking along the lines of like, I have to build now what I want to do long term, and so if I do anything now that is not what I want to do long term, I'm going to be building on a foundation that's going to frustrate me in the future because I'm going to build something that I actually didn't want to build. This is not true. This does not happen fundamentally. You can do things and implement strategies temporarily in order to arrive at a different place. It's the same concept of like, If my wife and I drive to the beach, like we live in Tennessee, so we're in a landlocked state. If we drive to the beach, we'd much rather just appear at the beach, but we have to drive through Alabama in order to get there. I don't necessarily want to drive through Alabama, but I know there's an end in sight and I am going to hit the coast. And that's where I'm ending up and wanting to end up. And because of that, I'm willing to drive through Alabama for the six hours that it's going to take. Okay. This is the same idea here. Now, The reason why this becomes powerful is because even if we just contextualized it to this particular situation here, what many guys run into is that they, their customers are reacting in a way to their prices that they wish their customers would not react in. They're reacting in a way that's obviously negative and it's telling their customer over the phone, Hey, or it's telling them over the phone, meaning their customers telling them over the phone, I'm not comfortable with the price you just said. So over time, what ends up happening is the detailer lowers his price or her price, I guess. And over time, you get frustrated because you're not making what you want to make. And of course, your energy and your brain cycles are then spent focusing on how to lower your price and appease the customer you're getting at the current time rather than focusing on getting a better customer who's way okay with your prices and being able to raise your price over time. So one of the immediate ways to solve this is to offer only interior detailing. And of course, vice versa, this could be true as well. You could offer exterior detailing at the same time. So what I mean by this is If a customer over the phone, which by the way, you're going to notice this when you talk to customers, you will begin to pinpoint what the customer is actually after as far as do they want the interior, do they want the exterior, like what is it that the customer is really after? And this is something that's not quite as black and white and can't be necessarily taught A, B, C, you know, two plus two is four. It's not a mathematical, uh, you know, thing that you can come to. It's more of a, it's more of an art as far as reading between the lines, listening to a customer, figuring out what they're after and learning how to talk to them in a way where you're addressing what they actually, whether they know it or not, want to be addressed and therefore building trust with them. But what I'm getting at here is 
Let's just put numbers to it to make it simple. If this entire interior and exterior detail here costs $200 because this particular uh, vehicle is not too dirty, it's actually in pretty good shape. But my customer does not want to pay the $200, and I can kind of tell from their tone and from the words they're using and the language they're using before I even got to pricing that that's going to make them uncomfortable. And they're really focusing on the interior because they're like, man, I've got kids. I'm going to give this to my daughter. She's about to turn 16. This is a big deal for her. And I know that they're more focused on the interior. What I can do and what is a very good strategy and, and very, by the way, just a very honest strategy, there's nothing deceptive about this either, is... I can focus in on their pain point being the interior and say, listen, I want to make sure this works for you. And I know that you're giving this to your daughter and this vehicle isn't a showpiece. And so you're not trying to get it detailed to where, you know, people are, it's going to be a rubbernecker at a spot, at a, at a stoplight, but you really want her to be satisfied with this car and you're pumped for her turning 16 and she's excited and we want to make this a good experience for her. She's obviously more concerned about the interior from what you've told me so far. So rather than going at all out and doing this full interior exterior detail that's going to take a lot of time and truth be told it's going to be a bit more expensive why don't we sit around the 150 165 dollar price point and by the way that conversation is obviously going to be adjusted depending on how you give pricing. And this is something that I actually talk about in the online course that I'm building out right now, exactly how to communicate pricing and, and why I've actually done it the way I do it. But again, this is just for an example. We say, why don't we sit around the $150, $165 price point? We're going to attack the entire interior, raise it to the highest level of perfection that's possible. And that way, you know exactly what you're getting. Your expectations are set on the front end. The interior is going to look incredible. And it's at a price point that I think you're probably going to be comfortable with. What are your thoughts about that? What I just did is not only did I lower the amount of hours that I'm going to have to put into this detail, not only did I simplify the detail in that I'm not addressing the full interior and exterior, I simplified it for myself and my customer and again lowering the amount of time it's going to take, but I also lowered my price at a relatively insignificant level if you think about, how do I want to word this? If you think about what I cut in regards to work and what I cut in regards to price, it is not a apples to apples equal playing field here, equal ratio. Let's say I would have charged $200 for the full detail, but the full detail was going to take me five hours. The interior is only going to take me two and a half, but I only lowered my price by $50. I didn't cut my price in half, though my time is now cut in half. This is what I'm talking about, about instantly raising your prices overnight without even your customers having to know. This is one of those concepts where we might contextualize it a little bit differently to understand it better. If you're buying an iPhone, an iPhone 8, and the iPhone 8 costs $900, and the iPhone 10 is significantly better, and you've got a significant amount of storage, and you've got a significant, there's certain things that are much, much more appealing about it, but it only costs, the 10 only costs $950, only costs, there's only a $150 difference between these two phones, and yet the value add for the higher priced one is going to be significantly greater. It's going to exceed the $150 difference that you're paying. There's kind of like this bottomed out price point that they sit at that they don't go underneath. So the customer ends up thinking, well, I might as well spend this amount of money to get this because once again, it's not this linear growth. It's this exponential. You add one variable here and then three variables get added on the other side. It's not it's not one to one. It's one to three. It's one to five. And that's kind of a, a a mathematical way to look at it. But that being said, this is happening in reverse in this situation. While the $200 number would have thrown my customer off and we would, and it would have thrown us into a conversation that we don't, I don't want to have and don't want to get caught up in reading between the lines and uh, communicating in a way where I know I'm going to give my customer what they want and I'm able to put the price in a sense where I would make more money detailing only the interior rather than doing the full exterior detail as well. Because once again, we can divide it out as a time uh, money ratio. If I'm working five hours and I'm getting paid $200, 
then not only am I putting in a bunch of time during my day to get this done, but I'm only making $40 an hour. Whereas, if we agree on the $150 price point, and I'm only spending two and a half hours on the interior alone, that math works out to $60 an hour. So I instantly increased my hourly rate by doing this, and all I did was actually create a win that satisfies my customer more than the, 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 the previous offer, the original offer would have been. I'm actually helping my customer, increasing my hourly rate, and spending less time on this vehicle. And I think this is the arena that we want to think in when we're detailing because then all we have to do is multiply this out into more customers. This is actually the same concept with the maintenance detail. That's why I talk so much about maintenance details. It's because when you can decrease time spent, increase hourly rate, and then of course become add a sort of predictability or consistency in revenue because you're seeing the same clients on a regular basis, you end up maximizing your time making the most money possible and you end up just having way more power to leverage your time. You can leverage employees and do a lot of much more interesting things within detailing. Now to revisit one of the first points that was made in this video, you're not only taking advantage of maximizing your hourly rate, they, a lot of times they call it your effective hourly rate, your EHR, okay? You want to basically take whatever action necessary to maximize this number because of course we want to increase the amount of income coming in, but if we can at the same time, which by, by the way, in many ways, the way you, you maximize your effective hourly rate is by decreasing the amount of time spent on you know, X, whatever, whatever that variable is. Of course, in, in this moment, it's the detailing itself. If I can minimize the amount of time spent, uh, but do it in a creative way like we've talked about, then essentially I'm maximizing in this situation my effective hourly rate. I have the max amount coming in that where, I, at least in the stage of business that I'm at, and then, of course, on top of that, I have time that I can now leverage in a different way in order to continue to maximize, you know, the the revenue. Now, that being said, to revisit what we talked about in the beginning of this video, in that simplifying your world in the beginning is not only something you should do, it's something that is going to lower the barrier to the customer as much as possible. Sometimes I think guys hear that and because of the nature of social media and the nature of how we're talking about building auto detailing businesses and comparison and all that sort of stuff, guys will not take approaches like this because it's like, okay, I'm trying to get the Lamborghini, the Ferrari, the Aston Martin, like whatever it is, or I'm trying to get the top, top client. Those things take time to do. So the question is, in the meantime, how are we building in order to get there? And this, I just think, is one of the most effective ways possible to implement strategies that make sense that will maximize things in the long term. If you can lower the barrier to the customer as much as possible, you th this is what will get the ball rolling. It's what's going to eventually push the snowball down the hill without you having to push it yourself, and the snowball will roll by itself and will continue to get bigger. Now, not only are you doing that in this moment as far as lowering the barrier to the customer as much as possible, but you're starting your detailing business by maximizing the amount of money you're making hourly and building trust with the customer because you're talking to them in a way where you're developing a system for them in that any given moment that works best for them. They're happy to pay the price that you're talking about because of the, once again, the conversation that you kind of have with them on the front end that I gave you guys an example of, and you are making the max amount of money in that time frame that makes sense for you because of the way you developed it. So comment below, does this make sense? If this idea makes sense, will you just comment below, say, yes, that makes sense. That will really help me know if like the way I'm communicating this is, is helpful or not helpful. And then at the same time, if you guys are feeling super generous today and you like the information that you're getting in this video, will you just smash that thumbs up button below the video? Because that, again, is a good indicator of me that this is good information and it's helping you guys. And then, by the way, guys, if you want to see any of the tools or the products that I'm using in this video before we pick up our business conversation, I always link up all of the tools from the vacuum to the products to the brushes to the steamer to everything I use in the YouTube description box below so you can see all those tools and products. And of course, I give you guys a little bit of detail below as far as 
what's affordable, what's not affordable, what you should buy depending on where you're at. So definitely use those affiliate links if you are looking to buy any of that. Of course, that helps me out just a little bit. And yes, those are affiliate links. And so I do get a small commission from those buys. Now, to pick up this conversation and really just talk about the last major point here, and that is the power of focus. And this is not, again, some like ambiguous thing that I'm trying to like talk in the clouds of like, you need to focus more and it will bring auto detailing success. This is actually a very practical thing to think about. Your ability to offer, let's just say, uh, in the first part of your business, you're doing 80% interior details. You're focusing in there. You, everybody always underestimates what this will bring long term. Your ability to hyper focus in this area not only obviously is going to make you like an expert in interior detailing, and it will inevitably be something people know you for, by the way. Like your reputation will inevitably be built in this area. It's just the way it works. And when that happens, you're going to be the go-to guy for this. Once again, it's kind of this concept of the riches are in the niches. Like you're already in a niche of detailing and now you're even niche, you know, niching down even more. And so when you do that, this hyper-focus ends up really bringing a lot of attention to this area of your business. This again happens over time. It doesn't happen instantly, but you become kind of known as that guy and it ends up bringing once again, it's kind of counterintuitive. You would think, oh man, I'm going to be turning customers away or I'm not going to get as much business because I'm offering less. The opposite actually happens. You will become the guy who does this incredible interior detailing work and you won't really even have to work at extending your business past that. You're going to get so many customers because of this hyper focus in this specific area that it ends up bringing opportunity where you can say, okay, now I'm going to do X years, now I'm going to do everything, now I'm going to do paint correction, now I'm going to do scratch repair. Like all of this stuff ends up coming, but once once again, you have to target these specific areas in order to break through to one so that you can break through to many. The other thing to be said about this that, again, should not be underestimated is while, yes, of course, the products and the tools and maybe some of the processes from interior detailing to exterior detailing are different, just like, you know, an apple and a banana are obviously different. There are some similarities, like they're both fruits, right? Like in the same way that you do this, there are similarities that are going to extend from what you do in your interior detailing to what you end up doing in your exterior detailing. So if the thought is, if I only do interior detailing, I'm not going to get an experience doing exterior detailing. I promise you, this once again is not the case and it's not true. I understand why that's the default way of thinking because that is, you know, obviously natural and, and logical to some degree. But once again, the idea that this does not extend to any other part of detailing is just completely wrong. And I will say this, as somebody who largely took this approach, actually, it wasn't like, once again, I only, I, I, I eliminated every other part of detailing but I did many more interiors than I did exteriors for the first about three years of my business. And it allowed me to exponentially grow as a detailer, learning things that I would have never, ever, ever learned otherwise. So guys, all of that being said, this detail was a really good example of using really simple, straightforward products. And so if you are in the beginning stages and you're looking for simple, straightforward products to use, I'm gonna hook up what I used in this video. They're, out, they're also relatively inexpensive, by the way, and some tools that are relatively inexpensive that you can use that I think will really help you get off the ground with your detailing business. If you're new to the Wilson Auto Detailing community and you like videos and content like this and it's helping you and it's valuable for where you're at, then consider subscribing, smash that red subscribe button, and tap the bell icon so that you get notified when I post a video, which by the way, in the summertime is every other day. So I'm posting a ton of content right now that I'm sure you guys don't want to miss because it's totally free. And guys, as always, thank you so much for being involved here and from Luke here at Wilson Auto Detailing. Keep working hard and I'll see you guys in the next video.